because the king lives in you and who knows what the king can do through you there is nothing he cannot do through you there is no limit to what he can do through you just by praying just by believing the kingdom of god is set on motion here in the earth The serpent crusher has come, the awaited one, the promised one. 2,000 years ago, what God's faithful people has been waiting for, for hundreds of years, for thousands of years, 2,000 years ago, the prophecy was fulfilled. He was stricken by the serpent. The venom of death was upon him. He died, but he crushed the head of the serpent. Tell the person sitting next to you, you are fighting a defeated foe. Everybody say, I'm victorious. Tell the person sitting next to you, we won. The ognata, the ognata, we won. Woo! That's the good news. The good news is we won. That's the good news. Amen. Can you say, good news? Okay, here's good news for you. We won! Whatever we're going through, let's always remember that uh, we won already. It's finished. Amen. This morning, uh, we have, we're in this series about the kingdom of God, about the nowness of the kingdom. Um, it's prophesied by the prophet Daniel. Uh, we read Daniel chapter 2 last week. Uh, next week, I plan to share on Daniel chapter 7. Uh, but Daniel chapter 2, the prophet gave this amazing prophecy 600 years before Jesus was born. And the Lord the Holy Spirit gave a timeline when the kingdom of God will come upon the earth. It will be during the fourth kingdom. And uh, after the Babylonian kingdom was the Middle Persian Empire. And after the Middle Persian Empire was the Grecian Empire. The Greeks ruled the world. And after the Greeks, the fourth kingdom was the Roman Empire. And during that era, Jesus Christ was born. Jesus Christ lived and walked in the earth. And he was crucified. And on the third day, he rose from the dead. And when he, when he taught... He thought about the kingdom. Even after he rose from the dead, he thought about the kingdom. And when he was uh, ascended to heaven, the Holy Spirit descended. You read the book of Acts. What was the message of the early church? They thought about the kingdom. You read in the last part of the book of Acts, Paul was imprisoned in Rome. He was under house arrest. And, and what, what does it say there? He preached the kingdom of God with boldness. They preach the kingdom of God. The gospel is about the kingship. The gospel is about the victory of the risen Christ. Amen. And so uh, this morning I would like to, to continue. Um, we, we took a look at Matthew chapter 16 last week. Can we go back there again? Matthew chapter 16. I'm going to talk about the keys of the kingdom. Look at verse 18. Uh, verse 19. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Uh, who among us here are interested in these keys of the kingdom? <laughs> this is a very interesting chapter. Uh, I've, I've been stuck in a chapter for, for, for many days now. I find this chapter to be very fascinating. Uh, Jesus asked uh, everybody this question, who do people say I am? What, what are the people thinking? What, what are they saying? Who am I? And they gave all the answers. Some said, oh, you're Elijah. Some say, oh, you're, you're a prophet Jeremiah, one of the prophets who died a long time ago. Now you're back. Some say you're John the Baptist. John the Baptist was beheaded. 
uh, and says, oh, you, you're John the Baptist. You're, you're, you've been resurrected. But then he asked, how about you? Who do you say I am? And Peter gave this answer, and Jesus said, Peter, you did not receive that from men. Nobody taught you that, not flesh and blood, but my Father revealed that to you. We know Jesus Christ by revelation, not by head knowledge, not by mere intellectual uh, information. Knowing Jesus is by revelation. The Father opens your eyes, and you see him as he really is. And, and Jesus said, this, you take note what he was talking about when he said this, this, okay, uh, verse 17. Blessed are you, Simon, son of, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by men, but by my Father in heaven. He, this, okay, then verse 18, and I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my ecclesia, and the gates of Hades cannot overcome it, will not prove stronger against it. This verse is loaded with, we could talk about this verse, what the Lord was talking about here. This is amazing. He said, you know, some people say, Peter is the foundation of the church. Peter is the rock upon which the church is built. That is clearly not what the Lord was talking about. He said, this, what, what was he talking about? This, the revelation. And upon this rock, I build my church. So what's the rock? The revelation of who Jesus is. Amen. That is the foundation. If Peter was the rock, the foundation, he would have said, upon you, I will build my ecclesia. He didn't say that. You're Peter, because Peter means rock. Petro. It means rock in Greek. But the rock, he was, uh, the, the use, the word for rock here is Petra. Meaning giant rock or boulder or mountainous rock. Upon this mountainous rock of revelation, I build. Uh, so we are built. On the revelation of who Jesus is. That is our foundation. Our only foundation. God forbid. That we would have any other foundation. Because I have seen. Movements. And I have seen. Uh, groups with so many foundations. Yes we need Jesus. But we also have. 16 essential. Doctrines. If you do not believe this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 16. If you disagree with one, I'm sorry you have to go. Go away. You don't belong here. Because everybody should adhere to this. 16 essential doctrines. <laughs> so that's, it's Jesus plus 16 essential doctrines. Or Jesus plus. You should be this and you should be that. Uh, praise God, it's Jesus plus nothing. Amen. It's Jesus and only Jesus. That is our, He is our foundation. We are built upon Him. He is the rock upon which we are built. Now, here, Jesus said, I will, on this rock of revelation, I will. See, notice here, it's future. Why? Because actually, He spoke these words one year before the cross. One year. One year later, he would be crucified and he would rise from the dead. But he spoke this in future tense. I will. How will he build his church? Through the crucifixion and the resurrection. Because through what the Lord did at the cross, you have been transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. You have been rescued. You have been purchased. You have been washed clean. You have been rebirthed. You are clothed with his righteousness. Now you are in the kingdom of the son he loves. Amen. Are you in the kingdom of God? You don't go in and out of the kingdom. You're in the kingdom, period. You're out of that one. You're in this kingdom now. You don't, you're not like in the kingdom of darkness Monday. And then by Tuesday, praise God, there's a prayer meeting. Or you met somebody in the mall and you were encouraged. Oh, I'm back in the kingdom. Wow. No, you're in the kingdom, no matter how you feel, no matter what you're going through. 
whatever darkness you're going through, I want to, to remind you, you are in the kingdom of God. You're in the kingdom forever. <laughs> so here, Jesus said, uh, the gates of Hades will not overcome. See here, there's conflict. Gates of Hades, Jesus used this word. It's very common during his time. It actually, the Greeks believe in what they call Hades, the realm of the dead. It's where demons live. It's the realm of darkness, of evil. And <clears throat> there is this conflict. There is this clash of kingdoms. Now, why would, maybe you're asking, why would the enemy attack me? Man, why would the enemy be interested in attacking me? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not being attacked by the enemy. Why would the enemy attack me? I'm just a small person. I'm, I'm just, I'm so insignificant. I'm, I'm nobody. Why would, why would the enemy attack me? I'm, I'm not being attacked by the enemy. I'm just an evil person. I'm just, I'm just bad. I'm a bad person. You know, parani Michael Jackson? I'm bad. I'm just a bad person. It's not the enemy attacking me. No, you're not a bad person. The enemy is making you think you're bad. And why would the enemy attack you? Why? Because in the next verse, look at the next verse. Verse 19. I will. Actually, it's, all, it's already done through the cross, through the resurrection. You have been given the keys already. You have been... The reason why the enemy is interested in you is because you are a channel of the kingdom. The reason why the enemy is interested in attacking you is because you, actually the enemy is afraid of you. Because the king lives in you and who knows what the king can do through you. There is nothing he cannot do through you. There is no limit to what he can do through you. Just by praying, just by believing, the kingdom of God is set on motion here on the earth. By believing, by praying, by trusting, calling on his name. You are a threat to the kingdom of darkness. I don't care how much of a failure you are in your eyes, how much of a failure you are in the eyes of people, how insignificant you are in your eyes, you are a threat to the kingdom of darkness. Because the king himself lives in you. You are a channel of the kingdom. You have been given keys. What are these keys? What you bind, what you restrict, what you forbid, what you stop will be stopped, and what you allow, what you release, will be released. He's talking about the kingdom of God. Here. He's talking about the clash between the realm of darkness and the kingdom of God. And he talked about the ecclesia. He said, I will build my ecclesia. You know, it's very unfortunate that that word ecclesia, when translated to English, the word church is used. The word church is in no way related to the word ecclesia. Ecclesia has a totally different meaning to the people, to the audience of Jesus, people of the first century. You know, Jesus could have, if, if the Lord was talking about building a congregation, building a religious group, he could have used so many words. There's so many choice of words he could have used. But why on earth would he choose this political word, ecclesia? An ecclesia is a, is a government assembly. It's a town council. It, way back during the era of the Grecian, Grecian Empire, the Greeks, kings, when they conquer a new territory, they would choose people from that area. The king would choose, the emperor would choose people who would represent him in that area. And that assembly is what is called ecclesia. Only kings have ecclesias. It's a government assembly. It's a government council. And when Jesus said, I will build my ecclesia, in other words, people were thinking, oh, so you're a king. Why would you have an ecclesia? Your ecclesia. You must be a king. Are you telling us you're a king? 
That is exactly what he was saying. And the gates of Hades, there's a clash, there's, a, there's war, there's conflict. That explains why you're having all this depression and all this disillusionment, all this discouragement, all of this negative. There's a clash. Hello? Why am I thinking like this? <laughs> it's because there's an enemy. And, and as a practical application, look at, look at the next, next uh, several verses, okay? In verse 21, actually, Jesus, Jesus prophesied that he would be crucified. He would be handed over to the elders, chief priests, and teachers of the law, and that he would be killed, and on the third day be raised to life. Look at verse 22. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said. This shall never happen to you. Now, Peter was full of good intentions. Peter was thinking, you are the Messiah, you are the king, you are going to be very popular. The, the sons of Israel, men from all over the world, sons of Israel that scattered all over the world, they're going to come and take arms and go. we're going to fight, we're going to conquer the Roman Empire. We're going to win, you're going to sit on the throne of our father David. The kingdom of God will be established in the earth, the greatest empire. The world has ever seen. That's that's the promise. You will never. What are you talking about? You're going to be killed. That's crazy. No. Peter rebuked Jesus. He said no. And what did Jesus say in verse 23? Jesus turned and said to Peter. Get behind me Satan. <laughs> Get behind me Satan. Yeah. Wait a minute. Just a few minutes before, Peter received this revelation from the Father. You know, just oh, awesome revelation. His eyes were open. He saw Jesus. You are the Christ. You, oh, Peter. He received this amazing revelation. Just like us. We're here. We're worshiping the Lord. Pinahilak ta. Oh. Pag abut sa balay. Boom. Uy. What happened? I thought I thought I was really filled with the Holy Spirit. How come I'm in this argument now? How come I'm I'm angry? How come I'm irritated? How come I'm critical? How come I'm I'm uh, offended? Okay, here Peter. Peter received this uh, broadcast from Satan. And what did Jesus say? Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You don't have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. Get behind me, Satan. See, Peter here, he, he, this is an example of us releasing what we should have been, you know, restricted. This thought should have been bound. Peter should have identified this and bound it, forbidden it. But what he did, he released. He released the lies of the enemy. And, you know, if we have made this mistake, and we have, I want to encourage you, look at Peter, he's a mighty man of God. Ang young shadow could heal. Who among us here, makatupong kang Peter, how many dead people we have raised. Peter, look at Peter, mighty man of God, and he made this mistake. And so it's okay. Tell, your, tell the person sitting next to you, hey, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Don't do it again. <laughs> what we release sometimes are not the thoughts of God. We put words to the thoughts that the enemy has been putting in our heads. The enemy puts some thoughts and we put words to it. We put action to it. We have the authority to forbid, to restrict, to stop. And what should we release? The mind of Christ. Amen? This is an example 
of using the keys of the kingdom. You have the authority. The king lives in you and he is eager to manifest through you. He is eager to release his brilliance, to release his creativity, to release his genius, to release ideas through you. Work through you and me. But many times, we are binding him and releasing another thing. Hello. We have the authority. That's why Jesus said, I give you the keys. What we lose, will be loosed in heaven. The Lord has declared something and you agree with him and it happens. Amen. Amen? So, um, here... You see the example of Peter. Then let's continue reading so verse 24. Here is actually Jesus begins to give a further explanation what it means to walk in the keys of the kingdom of God. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Come after me. You know, I look up that word after. It means it's the word airo. It means to be lifted up, to be carried up. If you want intimacy with me, you want me. You want me to love you and reveal myself to you. Learn to follow me as a cross. Learn what it means to be crucified with me. Deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. Taking up your cross. It's a language of first century people. It means death. Cross is not a religious ornament. Cross is a death. A means of, of death. It's not something you decorate your churches with. It's not something made of gold. And mga precious stones. No. A cross. is like an electric chair. It's like a lethal injection today. It's like, if you want to follow me, uh, take up your lethal injection. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's just see. This is, learn what it means to be crucified with him. Because there is such a thing as an old self. This conform to this world. Uh, actually, it's the false us. Because there is such a thing as the real you. The real you is centered on Christ. The kingdom of God is centered on Jesus Christ, but the kingdom of this world is centered on self. Self-interest, self-promotion, self-preservation. That is the characteristic of this world. And Jesus said, you know, learn to be crucified with me. Learn to walk in the ways of the cross. Look at the next verse. Verse 25. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me will find it. To lose your life means you die. Whoever would try to save his life would lose it. But whoever was willing to lose his life, you will find life. When you realize that he is your everything, you want nothing else but him. He is all you need. I like, I like uh, what actually Thea mentioned earlier. During those times when she had nothing, she could not even uh, pay uh, just going to school. During those times when she had nothing, she was actually experiencing the joy of the Lord. And during times when she had what she needs, her level of joy are the same. <laughs> It's because Jesus is our everything. Amen. This crazy idea, if only I have this, if only I have that, I would be happier. That is a lie. That is straight from the gates of Hades. <laughs> Tell the person sitting next to you, he is your all, he is your everything. Look to him. And that's what it means to be dead to this world and to be alive to Him. 
You know, and, and look at this, this verse here, verse 26. What good will it be for a man if he gains the whole world, yet forfeits his soul? And what can a man give in exchange for his soul? The, you know, kaning word nga world, he's not talking about the earth. He's not talking about this beautiful creation. Because the word of God says, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and everything in it. Jesus was talking about the fallen world system. He's not talking about creation. Okay? He's not talking about world nga ang beach nga nindot kayo sa samal. And he's not talking about that. He's talking about the fallen system of this world. I can quickly take a look at 1 John. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. Do not love the world or anything in the world. Okay, the word world is used. Don't love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Verse 16. For everything in the world. Okay, here John explains what is meant by world. Everything in the world. The cravings of sinful man, the lust of his eyes, and the boasting of what he has and does. Comes not from the Father, but from the world. He's talking about the kingdom of the enemy. We should learn what to bind and what to release. Learn to discern. You have the keys. Who knows what God can do through you? I don't care how small you are in your eyes. There's no limit to what God can do through you. But it is up to us. What are we releasing and what are we binding? Hello. Because it might very well be that we are binding the thoughts of God and releasing the thoughts of the evil one. There's no more tragic than seeing Christians walking in sin. You know, like, we're talking about grace. We're talking about being loved no matter what. We're talking about you are righteous no matter what. It's true. We take great joy whenever we hear those words. But men, some people apparently misunderstand what we're talking about. I mean, what about that pastor nga he's living with another woman? Why are you condemning me? We're under grace. We're <laughs> Oh, God loves me. I'm righteous in His eyes. What are you releasing? You're not releasing life. You are releasing death. Of course, you're a son of God. Of course, you're a child of God. Of course, you're purchased by the blood. Of course, yes, it's true. But you're not enjoying it. You're not experiencing it. And certainly, you are hindering others from seeing Jesus. The most foolish thing are Christians walking in sin, living in sin. That's the, the most foolish and craziest thing. Hello? <laughs> the keys of the kingdom. Whew. Okay, last verse. Okay. I'm not going to continue so, so chapter 16. I'm going to continue that next week. Some verses there might... We need to, to, to take time discussing, but let's let's close with Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. Paul here talking. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. And the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him. In his death. Wow. How many of us here. This verse is one of our most favorite new verses. I want to know Christ. And the power of his resurrection. Knowing Christ. Means knowing the power of his. Dead racing. Anointing. Holy Spirit. Moving through you. Resurrection from the dead. Our God raises the dead. 
And that power flows through us. I want to know Christ. And then he keeps on saying, and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. See, these two goes together. You cannot have one without the other. Knowing Christ, the power of his resurrection, you should know the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. Ay, di ko gusto anang becoming like him in his death. <laughs> and that is why we don't have the power to overcome. That is why the enemy can have his way. We have not learned to walk the crucified life. Become, what does it mean to fellowship and share in his sufferings? It means that his choices are our choices. We choose what he chooses. We're faced with a choice, humility or pride. We choose humility. We're faced with a choice. Should I forgive or should I retaliate? I forgive. His choices are our choices. We choose what he is choosing. That's what it means to fellowship Amen. and share in his sufferings. Because we do suffer when people reject us and people think we're crazy and people think we're weak and people think we're, we're dumb. Because instead of revenge, we choose to forgive. Instead of being offended, we choose to love. That is what it means. That is what using the keys of the kingdom means. We choose what we restrict. We choose what we bind. And we choose what we release. This is, I believe, the secret to walking in the authority of Christ. I believe that some of us here, the Lord is raising us up to be some of the greatest warriors in the kingdom. The Lord will entrust you with authority that when you pray, it will come to pass. When you speak healing, the sick will be healed. The blind see, the deaf hear. And when you invite the Holy Spirit, people will experience God. When you lead worship, the presence of God will come. Amen. The glory of God come. That's authority. But we must learn to release what needs to be released. Hey, Peter made a mistake. We make mistakes. But praise God, we learn. Amen? Amen. Some of us are going through mga dark and mga thoughts. My friend, that's not you. That's not you. You are a child of your father. You are a daughter of the king. You are a son of your father God. We go through like crippling, a feeling of defeat. That is not you. Learn to restrict that. Learn to reject that. Some of the most negative came on the thoughts. Learn to reject that. 